Hello, my name is Gary Simmons and I'm building the Zima 750. I've installed a Viking 130 engine onto my airframe. And this video is about preparation for your first start. Basically, it's a video checklist. And so I'll be going over eight elements of uh, the process by which you can have a successful first start. So first on the checklist is to verify the fluids. So you have oil, you have coolant, and you have gearbox oil. So check out the home built DVD and make sure you've reviewed the uh, filling of the fluids and make sure you have adequate supply of those fluids be prior to your uh, initial first start. So there we go. We've checked off number one on our checklist. Okay, the second thing on the checklist is to make sure that you've connected the, uh, the wires that have come with the wire loom uh, to the appropriate uh, locations. For instance, you have two power leads associated with the powering up of your ECU, your, your engine's computer. Make sure both of those leads are connected to the same point, uh, independent of any fuse or switch, connected directly to um, a link to the alternator charge, um, positive charge on the alternator. Also, be sure and connect the starter motor to the S terminal of your key switch and your alternator uh, wire to the ignition uh, lead on your key switch. Make sure you verify that and uh, then you'll have completed that portion of our checklist. We'll go ahead and check that one off. Now we got two out of the eight done. Okay, well now it's time to test the starter engagement, the activation of your battery relays, and also your fuel pumps. We'll start with the activation of the battery relays. So I'm going to go ahead and switch on battery number one and we should hear a little click for that relay engaging. And I hear the click and I'm also seeing that I now have on my header tank gas uh, fuel um, gauge I can see that it's activated as well so I know the battery is being uh, distributed throughout my system. Shut down number one and turn on number two. And once again, I see that the battery is working because my gauge is working and I can hear that relay activate. I'm going to leave um, that uh, relay activated and now I'm going to test the fuel pumps. Fuel pump number one. You hear that? And fuel pump number two. Okay, they both work. Next, we'll uh, test the activation of the starter engagement. Turn it on and all right. So that completes check number three. So now in preparation for the um, bleeding of the fuel line, bleeding the air out of the fuel line so it can hook up into the uh, fuel pump for the engine, you'll need to um, disconnect the, the fuel line as it's connected into the fuel pump. And then what I've done is I've I've created a way in which I can just uh, run my fuel pumps and have the gasoline uh, just go down this uh, funnel right here that's attached to my um, uh, prop extension, prop hub extension. I've just used a, a, a couple of uh, bolts and a little piece of aluminum to hold this in place. And then I have the hose down to a gas can. So there should be no spill in, in bleeding out your fuel lines. So I'll take this off and I'll direct it down to the to the funnel itself and then I'm going to run both fuel pumps at the same time making sure that the fuel goes all the way through both pumps ultimately to this position here and then I'll uh, when I stop the fuel pumps I'll expeditiously replace this line back onto the fuel pump so that'll be the plan so I'm going to go ahead and reposition the camera a bit so you can see the action here. And uh, we'll take it up with the start of the fuel. All right, I'm fixing to activate both fuel pumps right now. All right, now I'll just disconnect this, put it back on here. Now we're set. Okay, now we have our fuel line uh, back connected up to the fuel pump and I'll go ahead and remove the, um, the reservoir here for the gasoline uh, and I've gone ahead and we've checked that off the list. 
So next is establishing a solid uh, friction lock for our throttle at full idle. Okay, I'm going to uh, just demonstrate here that you can, as you can see, the throttle uh, has some uh, movement to it. And so what I want to do is I want to lock this all the way to idle. So it's all the way against the set screw here for the first start. So not only am I going to uh, verify that it is against this set screw, I'm going to go in the cockpit and I'm going to go ahead and lock that throttle in place right where it is right there. All right, so we've uh, completed the throttle um, uh, preset in locked position, and we've gone ahead and checked that off the list. And so next is our first start. Get ready to do that next. Okay, so before starting the engine, we're just going to verify the switches that we need to turn on and activate in preparation to actually uh, turn the starter key switch. So before starting the engine, we want to turn on battery one or two. I'll turn on one and we'll turn on the fuel pump and also activate my master switch and it's all working and now we'll go ahead and start her up I hear a motor running we'll let the motor run for about five minutes if you have a new exhaust system it might smoke a bit that's perfectly normal, just let that happen, let it make it on through. And then before we shut the engine down, we're going to go through a specific procedure to make sure the alternator is able to keep the engine running. Right now I'm going to go around and check for leaks. Oil and coolant leak and gearbox leak. Make sure, make sure there are no leaks. shutdown sequence. The first step is to make sure the engine will run on the alternator. I may need to increase the RPMs a bit in order to make sure the low RPMs uh, aren't uh, going to interfere with me. Looks like it's speeding up on me as it's warming up. Let's go ahead and try it now. There we have it. Now let's just go ahead and review the checklist. Okay, so just to review with respect to the first start, we're going to make sure that we've turned on either battery one or battery two or both, and make sure you turn on the fuel pump, either fuel pump one or fuel pump two or both. And if you have a master switch, go ahead and switch that on. And then as you saw me, I turned the uh, starter key and it started up. And I went ahead and checked for leaks with respect to uh, the engine coolant, uh, the, any oil, or any gearbox. Also, too, if you have uh, gauges, you want to make sure you have good oil pressure and uh, make a note of, of your RPMs. And as the engine heats up, those, those might change as you go. Then um, uh, after you've checked for leaks and you've uh, run it through for a few minutes, before you shut it down, you want to go through a specific procedure in order to make sure the engine will run entirely on the alternator. And so you can do that first by verifying that the engine runs when you switch off your uh, battery. And um, you may have to increase the idle slightly in order for the engine to stay running. Um, and as you probably saw in the video, um, my RPMs just kicked up all by themselves as the engine uh, warmed up. and um, and smoothed out and then uh, I was able to find that as I switched off the battery uh, the motor ran just fine without it. Then you um, go ahead and, and to, in order to kill it just go ahead and, and uh, switch off your key switch and switch off the batteries and the engine should stop. So that's the checklist and we've completed all eight of the items that are really important with respect to your first start. Now. 
You may have noticed that I don't have any wings on my fuselage at this time. I'm going to build those next. Uh, so for me, having a header tank uh, made all the difference with respect to making sure I could get my motor started. And if you have uh, your wing tanks, then just make sure you um, have fuel in your system. And if you don't have uh, a header tank or, a, um, or, or your wings established yet, there's still another way in which you can uh, work this out. And um, just one second, I'll be right back and I'll show you what I did. In order to fill my header tank, I had already plumbed the fuel lines for both wings. And I just uh, I came up with this uh, two-gallon gas can. I have cut the top off and I inserted a, um, um, a barbed uh, uh, fitting here and the fuel line. And I just connected it up to my wing tank line and put this on top of my fuselage and was able to... Uh, fill the header tank with fuel and um, can start it as much as I want now. And if you don't have a header tank or your wing tanks then you can use this as one way in which you can test, uh, uh, test your fuel pumps and get your first start happening. So I hope this has been helpful and uh, enjoy your first start.